In this video, we're going to look at getting started with environmental controls in Grid3. Using a grid pad and the Grid3 software, Adam is going to take you through using edit mode and learning infrared controls from a remote, and then we're going to learn about adding new cells which will take you to your favourite TV channels. Along the way, there'll be lots of tips and tricks, so over to you Adam. Within Grid3, I'm starting at the Grid Explorer page. I'm going to start by selecting my environmental control grid set. In this case, it's called TV Page Demo. It might be called something different on your computer. I click my button and it launches my grid set page. At this point, I'm going to start by editing these buttons to tell them what to do. To go into edit mode, go to the top of your screen and select anywhere across the top. You're looking to open up the menu. Click and a menu bar appears. Click edit grid. OK, once you're in edit mode, you can now begin to edit your buttons. Begin by selecting the button you want to train. By training, I mean teach it the button that you would otherwise press on your normal television remote control. Select the button. On the left hand side of the screen, it'll tell you what command the button currently is set to do. In this instance, it says television and it says change action or learn. And it's learning that we want to do. At the moment, while this page looks ready, it would do nothing if I select this cell. Select learn. The very first time you do this, you'll get a pop-up that says, you've not set up any televisions yet. Do you want to do this now? Select yes. And just select OK. Your television accessory for it has now been set up. Now you can begin learning your cells. OK, we're going to start by clicking on Learn. And up will come a pop-up on your screen asking you to point your remote control at the learning window. I'm now going to move to a video to show you where that learning window is. So we're now going to train the button. The very first time you do this, I'm going to click on a button. And the very first time, I'm going to choose learn. The very first time you do this, you'll get a pop-up that appears that says you haven't set up an accessory, a television accessory. You need to click on yes, and you just need to click on OK. You only should see that once for every TV you set up. OK, we can repeat that now, and that pop-up should not appear this time. So I'm going to click on learn. It offers to start learning straight away in this instance. So I'm going to point my remote control within about two inches of the learning window. It pops, I release, I press and release. Sometimes I have to do that a couple of times. Press and release. And you'll get that tone to say you've been successful. Now it will happen to you where you don't get that quite right first time. I had to press that button a couple of times in that instance. It can just be about the angle you're holding the remote control. It can be poor batteries if your batteries are beginning to go. So just try a different angle, try it again. There's no harm in doing it. So now we're gonna have a, a different button. We're gonna try tra training a channel up button. Okay, so here's my channel up on my remote control. Here's my equivalent on here. So I need to teach it that the button on my remote control. I've selected the button by touching it. I'm selecting learn on the command. and I'm gonna click on the start learning. Just sometimes it seems to pop up automatically, sometimes you have to click on start learning. So click on start learning, and then remember, I'm gonna be pointing my remote control at the learning window, following the instructions on the screen. Release, press and release. 
press and release. Great. So in each case there, I'm just listening when I'm doing this. I'm usually listening to little pop noises to tell me when it's time to move on to the next stage. Okay? But be ready for the fact you might have to do a button twice. It happens to all of us. Um, just remember my tips from before. Good batteries. Try and find a good angle that works. Once you've done it nine times, you'll become an old hand at this. I'm going to show you how to create a new favourite TV button on your environmental control television page. Go into your grid set, in this case TV page demo, and you'll see I've got some white cells at the bottom of this page that have already been created for me for some of the main channels I might want to go to. I want a new button for channel 5. Go up to the top of the screen where you'll find the menu bar and click. Select Edit Grid. Select one of your white buttons. In this case, I'm going to select Channel 4. You can copy this button and duplicate it. On the ribbon at the top of the screen, there's a copy option. Click Copy. Select a blank space next to your existing button and choose Paste and an absolute copy of that button will be created. I need to change the label. Up on the ribbon there's an option to change the label. I'm going to call that Channel 5. And I'm going to choose an appropriate image. Again, on the ribbon, some images are off to you, including the logo for Channel 5. If you need a different image, choose the Find Picture option. The cell now looks correct. On the left-hand side is what the cell will actually do. There is a television command on this button, as we've seen in previous videos. First of all, choose Change Action, so it's not going to sell, send a Channel 4. We want it to send something else. So change my action. And choose the number 5 from the list of options available to you. Click on OK. Now we're going to learn what that button has to do. So we're going to teach it the infrared code that your remote control would otherwise send. Have your remote control at the ready and select Learn. Point your remote control at the learning window in the top left corner of your GridPad 12 and hold that button down, release the button, press and release the button. Sometimes you may have to do that more than once. When you've successfully managed to record your button using those three stages as prompted on the screen, you can use the Transmit Now option to check whether your button has learned correctly. If nothing happens, re-record the button by, learning the learn op by using the Learn option. So now I'm going to show you how to create a button that will go to um, a program channel such as 101 or 102. In this case, one of my favourites across the bottom of this page. I've already learned how to uh, program a TV standby or a power on button, power off button of course, and a channel up button and that could be repeated for the various different buttons that I use mostly on a day-to-day -day basis, the up, down, left, right and of course guide. These white buttons at the bottom are handled slightly differently. So let's go into editing mode, so menu bar and edit grid. And just a reminder that when I click on the channel up button, which I recorded earlier, it has a single job to do. It's a television command, and I learned the job that it had to do by pointing my remote control at the learning window at the top left of the screen. But when I look at the BBC One button, it's slightly different. It has a number of jobs to do. It has three television commands on it. It has a one, transmit the number one. It has a short wait, so it waits to send that one before it sends the next option. 
then it sends a zero, and then it sends another one. Now, once you've learned one, you don't have to learn it again if you need to use the one again. Uh, if it's a new number that you've not trained before, of course, you have to train it once, but you don't have to train uh, that number again if you want to use it a second time. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do now. I'm going to train that BBC2 to be 102. So I'm going to click on BBC2. And at the moment, you'll see it's just got a number two on it, but I haven't trained that. So I'm going to quickly learn the number two button on my remote control in the same way as I did before. So I'm going to click Learn. My pop-up comes up reminding me what I have to do. I'm pressing number two. I'm holding my remote control about two inches away from the top of the screen. Following the instructions, press and release. Press and release sometimes has to be done, done a couple of times. And it should now have learnt. And I get a nice reassuring uh, sound to tell me that. So number two is learned. So now let's add a number one. So the process of doing that is click on add command on the left hand side. And you'll probably be faced with a screen that looks like this. It says add command. If you scroll down a little, you'll find a category called environment control. And they're generally color coded purple. So click on that and choose next. And look for the button in the first section to call television. I'm going to select television. And I'd like this to be a number one. So I'm going to click on number one and click on OK. All right, and that's been added to my list of commands. Currently, it's in the wrong place. I'd be going to channel 21 at the moment. But I can pick up the number one and just drag it to the top of the page. So now I'm going to 12. I need to add another command. So once again, go to the bottom of the of the little um, uh, window here, click on add command, repeat the process. It remembers where you last were, so you don't have to, you're already in the environmental control section, but select television. This time, select zero. Now, I've already recorded zero because I used it for making my BBC One page that I did earlier. I'm going to click on OK. So now I can shuffle this so it sits between the one and the two. Click and drag. And I shouldn't have to relearn that code. Now, here's a tip. If I left it like that, it might work, but more often than not, it might send a random selection of numbers. For example, it might send uh, uh, 012, 201. It might get them in the wrong order or send too many. It's best to put a short wait command in between each number, and it just helps make sure that you get the right number being sent. So I'm just going to show you how to do that now. Scroll to the bottom, click on Add Command, and this time I'm going to use the little search box in the top left corner as the fastest way to find the option that I'm looking for. So click on Search, and the window that pops up, if I just click by touching in that window, a keyboard pops up. I'm just going to type the word Wait, and you can see that a command appears with an egg timer on it. Select the command and click on OK. Once again, drag it so it sits between two television commands. I'm going to move up towards the top of the page. And very carefully, I'm going to try and position it. I'll just check where it sits. So you can see the first one I've done, it says television, wait, television. I've got one more to add. So repeat the process, add, wait, OK, and just move it up one. So I should now have a television command, a wait command, a television command, and a wait command. OK, now there's one more tip that I normally apply when I'm creating a button like this, and that is how long should it wait before the computer sends the second number? 
and I usually like to add just a little bit more than 0.1 of a second, which isn't very long. If you just increase it to 0.2, I tend to find that you get better success that way. So I'm just going to change those two commands now. OK, and now it's time to test whether that button works. OK, so, so far we have set up some single function buttons for things like channel up. I've done some channel down while you've uh, been away. Um, I've also shown you how you can set up a button that, for example, goes to BBC One HD, 101 or 102. Uh, now I'm going to show you how that works in action. OK, so on my screen, I've got my favourite setup. And I've got my various buttons that I've now recorded uh, on. So I'm on the television, I was on the BBC, sorry, Channel 4 HD at the moment. And if I do Channel Down, as long as I'm within a good line of sight of the, um, of the television, it should be absolutely fine. And I can navigate that way. Okay, I could go to the guide, and the guide on my set-up box pops up, and my television pops up, and I can navigate using the up, down, left, right buttons, which I've also recorded. I've also trained these buttons. So you can see on the television, that as I press the buttons, they're moving up and down. If I want to go uh, down to a different channel, um, I can move down, and I can say, oh, okay, I want to watch that particular channel. Once I'm there, in this case, on this guide, I would press exit to start watching that particular channel. So some shortcuts to that is to use these white favourite buttons. So remember, I put a string of three commands on these buttons, a 1, a 0 and a 2, or uh, in the big case of BBC 2, and a 101 for BBC 1. So when I press BBC 1, what you should see is that the buttons appear on the screen. And it's good to show you that sometimes it misses some buttons and you have to press it again. Okay, so BBC One is going to, there we are, BBC One HD. I'll try the second one to see if that's working well or not. And then I'll show you some tips as to how to avoid what just happened there. BBC Two. Once again, I'll try that again. Okay. So a couple of things to think about. So if I go into editing mode, it might be that if one button, one number is continually misbehaving, it might be worth re-recording it. So in that case, I had a couple of instances where the number one wasn't working very well. I could press learn and I could have a go at relearning the number one, just as we did before. The other thing to think about would be to increase the wait time between each of these buttons. Or in some instances, and this is a really good tip, particularly for a standby button or a power button. At the moment, these will be set to single press when a cell is selected press it just once it can be sometimes useful to hold down a button so choose hold down and then you get the chance to choose how long you want to hold the button down for i wouldn't hold it down for very long but sometimes just holding it down for a short amount of time maybe something less than half a second can be helpful i've used that technique if i go to the standby button now very much on this button here. So when you look at this particular button and look down, it's not a single press, it's a hold down. So if we zoom in on that button now, it says hold down for one second. And with a bit of experimentation, I found that was the length of time that the grid pad needed to send that number, that, that button, in order for my box, my television, to wake up. Thanks for watching. For more videos and webinars exploring everything Grid can do, head over to our YouTube channel or tap the subscribe button to stay up to date. You can also find loads more resources at our website, thinksmartbox.com. See you next time!